Our speaker this morning is talented in so many ways. From the exquisite pieces of jewelry that she has so skillfully crafted, to the gourmet meals she now serves up from her kitchen, inclusive of desserts, um, aptly called sweet and dandy. <laughs> she is also a singer, a teacher, and blogger. And she is here to deliver another inspiring serving of truth. Please help me welcome practitioner Carol Campbell to the podium. Good morning. <laughs> After an introduction like that, I better deliver, right? <laughs> oh, it's such a beautiful day and I'm so happy to see you all here. And for those of you who are joining us on the World Wide Web, welcome. You're visiting us here in beautiful, sunny Jamaica. Poinciana's are blooming. Bougainvillea are blooming. Everything is blooming. We've had wonderful rain just now, so everything is just fresh and lovely. Ernest Holmes, the founder of our teaching, writing in the Science of Mind text, says, and I quote, just so far as we depend upon any condition, past, present, or future, we are creating chaos, because we are then dealing with conditions as in effects and not with causes." End quote. So, in the face of appearances of less than ideal circumstances, what do we know to be true? When the storms of life rage around us and external factors shift and change without warning, where is our foundational faith. What tools do we have to weather the storm? The Bible is full of references to water and floods and demonstrations of purification in readiness for a higher expression. From Noah's Ark experience to Moses's Red Sea drama in Genesis to John the Baptist cleansing baptism rituals in the New Testament, Every experience of enlightened consciousness is preceded by an immersion, submersion of some kind. Noah simply surrendered his little idea self and followed explicit directions to prepare for a brand new expression of possibility after the cleansing flood. Moses, reluctant as he was, piloted the Israelites through deep waters of the Red Sea, arriving safely on the other shore, leaving behind the Egyptians representing dark ideas, which were consumed in the returning seas. New ideas could now emerge to replace those dead and gone. John the Baptist loudly declared, prepare yourselves, something greater is on the way. Now we are told in the metaphysical Bible dictionary that water represents great possibility. Out of seemingly negative conditions comes new growth and a higher understanding. Water suggests unexpressed capacity. The whole earth is filled, as in flooded, with potential ideas, waiting for words of truth to move upon the intelligence of the waters and bring forth spiritual realities. Even in the midst of a flood, we can rest in the spiritual part of our consciousness. Now comes my story. <laughs> now regulars here know that my life is full of stories, <laughs> lessons that come fast and furious, especially when you think everything's just fine. I've titled my talk this morning, Shift Happens. A few weeks ago, 
a friend and I were driving back to Kingston from St. Elizabeth. No drama expected this time. I certainly wasn't going to get lost. I made sure to have a co-pilot with me. All was great till we hit the highway access at Maypen. <laughs> and this we were now in what was approaching storm conditions. We noticed the traffic was backed up quite a bit and we learned that a tree had fallen across the highway. So we were told we better find an alternate route. Hmm, that shouldn't be that difficult, right? We got directions at a nearby gas station and set off quite merrily and calmly in the new direction, expecting to be home in about an hour or two, tops. Well, you know what they say, the best laid plans? <laughs> Man plan and God laugh. <laughs> well, that's what we have a saying in Jamaica. <laughs> As we turned on the road to the new route, we were met with a wall of water due to what was now torrential rain and flooded roads. My trusty car immediately stalled in the middle of the intersection. Now I know enough to not try restarting it, so I decided to just shut it down and wait until the water receded which local residents assured me would be soon. <laughs> That's like the countryman's just around the corner. <laughs> A good one hour later, with trucks, buses, trailers, and every other kind of vehicle speeding past us, further, further drenching the engine, two kind local men offered to push us out of the flood and into an adjacent business parking lot. We kind of breathed a sigh of relief, kind of. <laughs> it took another hour for the technician from the Automobile Association to arrive to assess the condition of the car. His assessment, the air filter was totally soaked, the engine flooded, and the car not drivable. Say what? <laughs> the car was serviced the day before, okay? It gets more interesting. The car would now need to be towed to Kingston, but the Automobile Association truck was not available as the driver was off duty and comfortably at home in Portmore. So what? <laughs> it would take him about three hours to reach me and it would cost $35,000 to tow. And that would be cash only, please. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> I don't usually drive around with $35,000 cash in my vehicle. And anyway, I didn't have access to that amount at that time. Did I start to spiral down the rabbit hole? Um, yeah. <laughs> I had visions of us spending the night locked in the car, marooned in a parking lot in Maypen till God knows when. Thankfully, I had the presence of mind to reach out in my approaching desperation to a practitioner, this wonderful lady sharing the platform with me this morning. When I initially called and she heard I was stuck in May Pen, she started to laugh because my travel escapades and misadventures are legendary in these parts. <laughs> but from the tone of my voice, she quickly understood this was not the usual, oh, I'm lost again. I was now in tears, which was alarming enough for those who know me. This is not the kind of thing that makes me cry. It wasn't about fear. It was more frustration and a bit of practitioneritis. Practitioner you know, what am I doing in this situation? How did I get here? And more importantly, how the heck am I going to get out of this? Well, Jennifer immediately assumed practitioner mode and calmed me down through a perfect treatment of right action and divine order, assuring me that everything would unfold perfectly at the right time, in the right way, with ease. I took a deep breath. This was my Noah moment. 
Metaphysically, Noah means obedience to the call of spirit, resulting in a new state of consciousness, an all-inclusive oneness. So in the midst of this flood, literally, and a flood of error thinking on my part, I chose to rest in my spiritual connection and to calmly accept any directions I would receive. All the animals destined for my ark, which are all my sense thoughts, were lining up in an orderly fashion to realize pure ideas of my spiritual identity. The Automobile Association technician kindly agreed to stay with us as we contemplated our next move. How to stay afloat, navigate the flood, still raging, and when to send out our dove to identify dry land. After a while, my friend decided, you know, I'm gonna call Courtney. So she decided to call our mutual friend in Chicago. This is Chicago, Illinois, <laughs> about our situation. Who had a friend in St. Elizabeth he decided to call? Who happened to know a truck driver in Maypen? <laughs> we called him, and lo and behold, he was available and would transport us to Kingston for much less money. In addition, the organization that caused us to be traveling that day, on hearing our flight, decided to cover the truck fee. You see the car falling all the way to place? We still had to wait another three hours for the new tow truck. But the dove had finally come back with an olive branch. We made it back to Kingston at around 10 p.m., having left St. Elizabeth at 1.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> you see, when like Noah, we not only willingly tackle the task at hand, but do so with confidence that all is well, that will propel us to take the next step, and the next step, one step at a time, in faith and trust. And even when life throws you a curveball, you can rest in the consciousness of God's presence and never need feel flooded by negative conditions and ideas. There is no need to get drawn into every thought that you think. You can choose to be fully present to now and decide what is important and deserving of attention in the moment, now. My favorite philosopher, Charlie Brown, <laughs> says, and I quote, I have developed a new philosophy. I only dread one day at a time. <laughs> well, we don't need to dread anything. Eckhart Tolle, writing in his book, A New Earth, tells us, and I quote, the evolutionary impulse of the universe rises up to meet you when you are present in the moment. He also says there are three stages to dealing with life's events. The first is acceptance of the event. What is it? Okay. A flood situation. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. It is what it is. <laughs> but it doesn't end there. <laughs> Being caught in a flood is an event. In the moment, we can simply accept it as such without attaching a story to it, without laying blame, without claiming shame. Okay, you have a choice. You could have said, oh, I'm caught in this flood and I have things to do, I have places to go, why is this happening, why, blah, blah, blah. why am I not fix the road? That's a choice. <laughs> but accepting the situation will move you into a more positive frame of mind where you can shift the attitude surrounding the event rather than stay with the anxiety and denial of what is. Was there something I could do about the flood? No. Could I do something about how I respond to the flood? Absolutely. I can choose to scurry down the rabbit hole and stay in a negative state, making myself and everyone around me miserable. Or 
I can choose to take purposeful action in an atmosphere of peace by recognizing my oneness with spirit, my oneness with all that is, including the flood. And if, like me, you're approaching overwhelm in any situation, for heaven's sakes, call a practitioner. Call a minister. That's why we're here. Oh, did I introduce myself? I'm Carol Campbell, practitioner. <laughs> There's no shame in asking for help. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of good judgment. Your vulnerability is your strength. Our Declaration of Principles states, and I quote, we believe in the control of conditions through the power of this mind. Now let me explain that. What we control is how the external conditions affect us through the use of our mind working in concert with universal mind. But to do that, we have to know the law, the creative law that is, and cooperate with it. Ralph Waldo Emerson, writing in his essay on spiritual laws, puts it this way. Place yourself in the middle of the stream of power and wisdom which flows into you as life. Place yourself in the full center of that flood. Then you are without effort impelled to truth, to right and perfect contentment." End quote. Our declaration also states, we believe that the universal spirit, which is God, operates through a universal mind, which is the law of God, and that we are surrounded by this creative mind, which receives the direct impress of our thought and acts upon it. My saga is not over. My mechanic informed me that I am now faced with needing a new engine. <laughs> I won't bother to tell you how much that is going to cost. <laughs> but let's just say I'm trusting that divine order is still at work. And I am seeing evidence of that. <laughs> in order to experience a change in any circumstance, we must change. Spiritual unfoldment, expansion of consciousness, all these lofty sounding words, it simply means we can be led to a greater experience of living once we open to it and let go of the drama and the trauma. We alone initiate the process in our lives through the release of unwanted ideas, fears, and doubts. Then, through the embodiment and acceptance of those principles that calm raging floods, we arrive at a deeper understanding of our true self, our inherent God nature, and are able to speak peace to the storms around us. I leave you with this affirmation. I'll say it and then we can say it together. Today, I believe in divine guidance. I know that not only all is well with my soul, my spirit, and my mind, all is well with my affairs. Together. Today I believe in divine guidance. Today I believe in divine guidance. I know that not only all is well with my soul. I know that not only all is well with my soul. My spirit. My spirit. And my mind. And my mind. All is well with my affairs. I know this to be true for me and for everyone within the sound of my voice. I know this to be true for me and for everyone within the sound of my voice. God is blessing you now. Namaste. Namaste.